Good morning, guys. Today I am off to a workshop at the Institute of Historical Research called Getting Grants, Getting Published and Staying Sane, Life After the PhD. So I'm not really sure what to expect um, of this workshop. It looks interesting, but it's aimed at historians rather than ancient historians. Um, I still think that I'm going to get something valuable out of it, so I'll take you along. Okay, I'll check back in with you during the day. Hey guys, I'm at the IHR. Oh, we're in the first coffee break, um, so I feel like I'm coming to you with a very, very full cup. Um, the first session has just finished, and it was mainly sort of on getting through the transitory period. We did a couple of workshop style activities on what our fears and hopes were. Um, and then we had three speakers present. I'm going to write up my notes um, and post them to my blog. So I'll link that below. Um, I'm actually feeling rubbish <laughs> about the whole thing, which I know is not the point really. The point is to be feeling good and hopeful, but I'm really not. I am feeling very discouraged. I'm feeling um, really like it's all doom and gloom and that that hasn't been the message um, by any means which you'll see when the notes go up and so hopefully the next two sessions the next session is on getting grants and the session after on getting published um, so hopefully after those two sessions when I feel a bit more like concrete things to do suggestions ideas and not just a bit of personal reflection and doom and gloom I will feel less doom and gloom. So hopefully next time I check in with you, I'll be feeling a bit better about the whole thing and not worse. Okay, bye. Right, it's lunchtime and I am feeling concerned and discouraged by a lot of things. Um, I'm feeling a bit better because the last session, which was on publication, was very interesting, very useful um, and quite practical, which I think has demystified a bit of publishing. Um, we talked about both the journal articles and monographs and their place and actually how recent PhDs can and should use their time. So I found that really good. Um, so I'm feeling much better about how this day is turning out than I was at lunchtime. I want to say something about, I guess, my pessimism that led to me feeling really very um, doom and gloom uh, after the morning, which I think is about privilege. Um, and I touched on this when I spoke at lunchtime and being aware of the privilege that you have. My biggest problem, I think, was that it's all very well and good in a sense to discuss uh, post-PhD ECR factors and discuss transients and all of that kind of stuff, but when all the people on the panel have permanent academic jobs, then that's also alienating in a sense, because there isn't a narrative about the other side. Um, there isn't somebody who has made a successful career outside academia in heritage or policy or think tanks or journalism or whatever the case may be. And those things are brought up but no one has come in and said, this is a viable thing to do and this is something which I did and here's how I did it. Now, I'm not in a position right now where I want that, but I think that balance would have made me feel much better about today. Um, and I think it's very interesting living with a person. My partner has a PhD and does not have an academic job. He has a wonderful, amazing job which suits him down to the ground, which he loves, but it wasn't at all what he imagined he would be doing when he was finishing his PhD. 
So I kind of have this other side and I think that that would be really useful for people to see. So I can't really say much about that, obviously. I'm not in a position to, but I think that's something which somebody should say something about at some point. Um, and with that, I am going to check back in with some final thoughts at the end of the day. Um, but now I'm going to get a cup of coffee. Bye. Hey guys, it's now Tuesday and I have had a chance to consider um, how I feel about the workshop that I was at on Friday. It wasn't all doom and gloom um, and there were lots of good things and I, I really honestly appreciate how hard it is to put on a program like that particularly aimed at PhDs who are about to finish or new ECRs, um, new early career academics. And it's difficult to strike a balance between realism and optimism and understanding the perils and dangers of the job market and also trying to talk meaningfully about the positives and the things that we can do, um, the people in that transient position and the things that we can do. Um, so there were two really good sections. Um, one was Will Pooley from Bristol and he has actually hosted his talk. Um, so I'm going to link to that below and it, that's really worth reading. Um, and the other section was the more Q&A style panel on publishing. Although much of what had sort of been said there I had heard before, but sometimes with advice it is nice to have it sort of confirmed in multiple places. I did say I was going to write up my notes and I'm actually not going to do that because... I'm not sure that actually anybody but me will get anything out of them. But I do want to sort of run through a couple of things which I think were really good about the day, good bits of advice or something like that. The first one was quite a number of people commented that they set a time limit on getting an academic job and made a concrete plan B. That's not something that I have done. Um, and I think it is something that I will now have to sit down and really think very sort of hard about doing. Um, I think it is one of the biggest problems that I have had and that I know other people in situations like mine have had is the like staring into the abyss feeling of being post PhD um, and not having a concrete thing to look towards. Um, and the other thing that was brought up a few times um, is the idea of community and building a community around yourself and whether that is with mentors or peers or people outside academia or more ideally with all three but then also when we got into talking about public history and about um, outreach and things like that building communities in those areas too because people have different skill sets and you can use those skill sets um, in an exchange um, in order to learn new things or get places you want to go or build partnerships and building those communities is one of the really important ways of doing that. So. The issues that I have. 
I'm sure it will come as no shock to say that the biggest issue that I had with the way that the day was run and the content, and this is not just the official content, but also the commentary and things like that, was the absolute blindness to privilege to the point where one senior academic actively said if you have a fully funded PhD you have no excuse to not volunteer or do extra labour free labour to put yourself in a good position to get a job and I understand why somebody might think that is a good piece of advice but I think and I am very aware that I am not really in a position to say very much but I think that that is very damaging it is a hugely damaging thing to say um, and I was very angry um, about the assumption of position, uh, financial and social, and the idea that if you cannot do these free things, that you should be explaining why you um, are not doing these things in your cover letter to the point where she suggested that um, a parent or a person with other caring duties should explain that in their cover letter um, and I just that's I understand I'm, I'm struggling, I'm sure you can tell. I am really struggling to articulate the issues with this because I do understand having to make sacrifices and put yourself on a level playing field and all of that kind of stuff. I get where that attitude comes from, but it isn't helpful. It is not practical advice for a lot of people and Honestly, I left feeling like because I don't have the time and the physical, financial resources that there's just no point in going on. But then that's like privilege reinforcing itself isn't it because people who are not perhaps privileged and don't get me wrong I am hugely privileged I am massively massively privileged in so many ways and I recognize that um, I know that there are people who face you know really significantly greater hardships than I do um, I have spoken about my own privilege in several places, including on um, the jobs.ac.uk post-PhD blog. Um, I'm going to leave it there, I think, because I don't think that I can intelligently say any more about this right now. Um, plus, I think this video is probably getting a bit on the long side. Um, if you are organising an event aimed at brand new PhDs, be sensitive to the position that they are in and their insecurities. Um, I do not think that it is necessarily the wisest idea to have a panel of people who have walked out of their PhD and into jobs. It is 
probably worth your time trying to find somebody who has not done that, whose academic career has not gone to plan. And that was something actually which on Friday in the last panel, the last two speakers, um, one who worked, uh, went from his PhD into libraries and library exhibitions and one who went through public history and came back into academia um, a little bit later. They were the most, uh, it, and Will, who I mentioned earlier, they were the most uplifting, wonderful, um, spiriting talks of the day. And both of those last two speakers acknowledged the hurt, the pain, the... I don't, I don't know. They acknowledged that it was shitty. And nobody else kind of seemed to understand that shittiness. Okay, I actually am going to leave it there because this is now really long. Um, and I will see you again soon. Um, and part two of the academic job interviews vlog is coming soon also. Bye.